In this video, I thought I'd go through a specific set of Tamura questions that start with the words how many real roots or how many solutions. Find the number of solutions. Now, in these questions, you're never being asked to do any like proper algebra because you're not being asked what the solutions are. You're just being asked how many there are. And you know what can always tell you how many of something there are? A sketch. These are 100% of the time graph sketching problems. The, this is almost like a word association game. When you get into the Tamur paper and you see this language, your brain immediately must go to sketching. There, there is no other more efficient method than this. Your time pressured into mirror as, as it is just go straight into a graph every single time So let's see how this works then So if we let this thing here equal y and try and sketch this on x or y axis Well, we know it's a, it's a positive cortex So it's going to go up uh, the top right left and finish at the top right But what happens in between well, we can't assess the roots because it's a cortex But we can assess the turning points and, and and they've given us a really nice cortex here because it doesn't have an x term Which means when we differentiate we end up with a cubic but it's an easy cubic to solve because x runs through the whole thing. Um, and so we can factorize it out and we can solve for our three roots when we factorize it all the way along. Uh, this is very extra of me, excellent. Anyway, and you get x is 0, 1, and 2, which of course you can substitute back into the original equation to find the y coordinates of those things. Get minus 10, minus 9, and minus 10 respectively. And when you draw it, like I said, it's a cortex, so it starts up here and ends over here somewhere uh, because this term outweighs everything else and it's always positive. And then you have these these turning points at 0, 1, 2, minus 10, minus 9, minus 10, which you can put down as well, put a line through them because they're turning points. And then the sketch must look something like this. And we can very easily see here, because this turning point is at, is, is at minus 9, it doesn't come back up to the x-axis. So there are therefore only two roots. I have no idea what they are, but there are only two of them. Uh, and so we answer the question. Um, so cool. Uh, this one here, very similar. It looks more complicated because this looks x tan x looks like a horrible thing to sketch. Um, the way that I did this is, is actually to rearrange this slightly first and say, actually, let's make this tan x equals 1 over x. And now I'm saying, how many solutions or how many times does this thing here intersect this thing here? Again, I don't care where those intersections are. I'm just asking how many times they, they intersect. And a sketch will show that to me. Right? I can sketch tan of x. It looks a bit like this between minus 2 pi and 2 pi. I know I've done this in, in a computer, so it looks much better than by hand, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be fine. We all know what 1 over x looks like. It's, it's this one that goes like this and this. Overlay each of these two things over the top of each other, and you get this. And because we're cutting the graph off at 2 pi and minus 2 pi, we're going to have 1, 2, 3, and 4 solutions. So that question is very quick, as long as you spot the trick. Of course, you can try and sketch x tan x, but that rearrangement was probably the most efficient thing to do there. Um, one more. This one is slightly different because it does ask for the number of solutions, but then it also asks for something about them. So I'm going to ignore this bit first, and I'm just going to focus on, okay, well, if I knew how many number of solutions it had, I would, I would narrow it down to one of these two pa three pairs of options. So, okay, how many how do I find the number of solutions? Of course, I sketch the graph. I've already got the axis right here. So let's sketch the graph between 0 and 180 because that's the, the bound we're interested in. Now, that's, we're interested, obviously, in sketching this thing and this thing separately, just like the previous question. Um, they both have causes in them, so let's focus on sketching the cos graph first. Now, it's tempting to think this is a cos squared, so maybe I should play around with 1 minus sine squared. But actually, the far more efficient thing to notice here is that 2 cos squared minus 1 is actually cos 2x. This is the double angle identity, right? Or at least one of the, the many. And, and all this is is just this times by minus 1. So, so therefore, this thing here equals minus cos 2x. And, and both of these things I can sketch, right? Cos x between 0 and yt looks like this. It starts up at 1, heads down, down to here. This is a pretty terrible sketch, but it's, it's fine. It's just a sketch. So minus cos of x is obviously flipped in the x-axis. It looks like this. Um, and so minus 2 cos of x, again, think dra graph transformations. This has been compressed two times into the y-axis. So it's going to do uh, this loop twice as quickly and then come back down again. So it's going to look like that, essentially. It doesn't look like this at all. It actually bends over like this. But this is kind of a demonstration of just how terribly you can draw pictures like this and get away with it. This, this should basically look like an entire upside down cos graph uh, in one go. It doesn't. It looks like a quadratic, but that's because sketching you can just do poorly sometimes. It really doesn't make a difference. And this is just a nice demonstration of that. Anyway, now sketching the modulus of cos x. Well, cos x looks like this. Now down here, for instance, when x is 180, you've got cos x is minus 1. But of course, minus 1 modded is plus 1. So this point 
goes from here and jumps up to here. And likewise, if you said cos of 135, that would be minus something, but that jumps to positive something, right? And so actually, this, this graph just follows the cos x graph down to here, and then as soon as it becomes negative, it starts following the negative cos x graph. If you saw my mod video that I made yesterday, I'm, I'm saying basically the same thing. It follows cos until it becomes negative, then it starts becoming minus cos instead. So this graph is literally just going to be those two aspects of, of those two graphs with this sort of cusp in the middle here at 90. Um, and now we're just being asked, well, how many solutions do these things have? Well, clearly two. And now you can see that the terribleness of this this curve here, which doesn't, which isn't this graph at all, doesn't matter because all I'm doing is counting the two intersections. Um, so, okay, the answer is either A or B. What's the sum of them? Well, you can see that 90 is in the middle here, clearly, because it went from 0 to 180. One solution is, is something less than 90. One solution is a bit more. If it was 89 and 91 then they would add up to make 180. If it was 88 and 92, they would add up to make 180. It's clearly going to be symmetrical, e e even though, again, this graph is terribly, terribly sketched. It's clearly symmetrical anyway. Um, and so this, some of the solution is going to be 180 because they're, they're, e they're equally either side of this middle term, 90. So the answer is going to be A. Um, so, okay, main point of this video then, uh, though, is, is basically if you ever see this language, all you're trying to do immediately is sketch it. Find the most efficient way to sketch it. So for this one, it was definitely finding this double angle identity, although you could have certainly tried to sketch this from the cos graph and squaring and so on, but always have this in the back of your mind. For the previous question, the most efficient way was a quick rearrangement, um, which which allowed me to sketch it very quickly. And for the one before that, um, this, this is very standard stuff. Differentiate, find the turning points, sketch it. Um, but yeah, see this language, do a sketch. Uh, thank you for watching.